Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. And today I'm going to be reviewing something that's low budget, of course. Something with giant creatures, something with destruction, mayhem, you know, something of the sh sorts, of course. Something that's really old school. Okay. Seems like something up my alley with lots of terror and craziness going on, of course. Okay, Invasion of Astro Monster, the Japanese version, of course, or the American version of this film did appear in 1970, by the way. But one of the reasons as to why I'm going to be talking about it, other than the fact what I just said a moment ago, you know, creature features and whatnot, spooky movies, but also because of the fact that a lot of people are familiar with these films, mostly because of the fact that, at least in the United States anyway, have been exposed to the, what I will call, the bastard versions. Yeah, the bastard versions of these films. I don't care for these, really. Because a lot of context was changed. They were butchered. They were really heavily edited. And, yeah, of course. So, a lot of people have not seen the actual versions of these movies and what they truly mean. And, yes, of course, I've already reviewed one of the editions of this movie a good while ago so this is some ways uh like a revisit i guess you would say i've done this bef kind of thing before reviewing different editions of certain movies and that's what i'm doing here i'm reviewing this one here folks well and yeah i just figured i would because why the hell not that i don't like this kind of stuff anyway so it seems like a good idea to do so obviously yeah and this presentation Folks, I just thought I'd talk about this version, obviously, of the Japanese film. And here we go. Of course, as always, I have to talk about the plot. So let's get into it, shall we? So yeah, there are these two astronauts that go onto the planet X. And yeah, of course, I have to conduct some research. Yes, of course, it's going to go all astray because of the fact that you come across in a door. Well, obviously, Kin Hedor, the three-headed monster, is a threat to everybody, even the aliens on this planet, whom asked the Earth characters, the Earth people, for some assistance, because they need Rodan and Godzilla to fight this thing off. However, things get rather complicated when one of these astronauts fall in love with this woman, which, of course, is a huge no-no to our people. The community she lives in forbids love. But, obviously, the thing is that they would give the Earth people some sort of exchange because what they have is what they claim to have, some sort of cure for all the cancer. Obviously, something is amiss here, folks. Something seems strange about these alien invaders. Well, of course. But, yeah, they want to use these monsters for their own use. I know, so what a surprise. So, anyway... The thing is that, of course, there's going to be plenty of destruction scenes in this film and whatnot. And that's pretty cool, obviously. Like I said, I'm reviewing this version of it. The picture here is pretty crystal, pretty nice, crystal clear. Well, for DVD standards, anyway. I like how that this is presented with the Japanese photo, I guess you can say, with, the, with this on it, with the master collection i guess you would say so that's definitely a good thing there and it's presented in this dvd case and the extras are too bad i guess i do kind of wish it could have been a bit more but it's decent i suppose and i do like the overall look really I'm trying to give you a sense of the chaos this movie does come off more of a king hedora movie if anything and I do like the posters they have inside of this as well. The overall design of this is actually pretty good. I do like all the gray here. And the DVD itself, the picture on here, this needs some improvement if you ask me. But the casing as a whole isn't too bad, of course. I like that. Obviously, that's an overall good look that this have. But I do have a slight complaint, I guess you can say, about the way they felt this film was carried, I guess you can say, in this 
At least in this version is what I'm talking about. At least in this version. Because the thing is that if you have the access, like the, let's say you want to hear the the director's commentary, so to speak, it's going to be for, on the on the bastard version, not, not the original version, of course. You're going to have to watch the shit show bastard version and listen to the, um, I guess, the director's commentary. I mean, the bastard version of this film is not the worst, really, but... If, if something is done a certain way, I would like to be left alone, of course. I'm what you, I'm what you would call a purist, I guess. I'm coming off more of a purist, if anything, I know. And, but anyway, point being, I would like to have the the director's commentary, so to speak, on the Japanese version. And by the way, the commentary is not actually done by the actual director. It's saying that the actual director of these movies... Had unfortunately passed away a long time ago before this was even released. So yeah, just going out. I told the the commentary was done by somebody else, folks. The English commentary, obviously. And yes, this does come with English subtitles, in case anyone is wondering. So there you go. Yes, of course, Ken Hedora would pose a threat to humanity because he's really strong. And it's up to Godzilla and Rodan to stop him, of course. Even though humanity does not like them. Because people are dicks, of course. One thing I would definitely say is that I did like the fact that there was one scene in the film. Once people realize that the aliens are full of shit. It's like everybody around the world, other governments and whatnot, were pretty much in panic. Because the citizens were... Yeah, they, they didn't know what to do now. So the alien characters were lying. They didn't have no cures for anything, of course. But the destruction scenes are pretty good. I like the destruction scenes in this film. Of course, how to bring that up. Uh, destruction sequences were pretty well done. Yes, despite the fact that they're low budget. And this was the first and so far only Godzilla film. They had a fight with Godzilla in outer space. So that's something. And also, yes, the fight scenes were pretty well done. Even though the fight scenes were not maybe not the focus, this was more on a human drama. If anything, it felt like more of a human drama movie than just fight scenes and fight scenes and fight scenes with, with the monsters. At least that's how I took it, anyway. But one major criticism towards this film is that, yeah, unfortunately, however, one major criticism is that, unfortunately, yes, some stock footage was actually recycled from Rodan into this movie and it's quite obvious that they did that so in that regard maybe some of the editing here and there seems a little choppy because of that so because it's noticeable really so as a result it does make the film seem a lot more I guess you can say in other words cheaper the character of of Martha was eventually going to be a part of this story, but I guess, in other words, the problem was that the budget itself went too out of hand, so she was replaced, unfortunately. And yes, it had something to do with the character of Kinador, since the character of Kinador was far too cumbersome to be controlled on doing the production. At the end of the day, I can say I like this one, folks. I did like how the aliens were trying to control these monsters to cause mayhem. Yeah, it was a pretty insane ride, so to speak. So, this was a good entry as far as I'm concerned. Even though in this version, I kind of felt like they could have done more with this version that they had, of course. But anyway. Yes, of course, that one dance that Godzilla did was pretty damn stupid. But then again, this was an era where people liked... The Ams West Batman, as goofy, campy, silly as that was, but there you go. Even that's even remembered to this very day, so um, that's something. Yeah, for what it's worth, I did enjoy it, I guess you can say, in other words. Yeah, I did like the designs for the alien outfits. So yeah, all the women look exactly the same. That's actually kind of bizarre when you think about it. They're programmed to be... A specific way to program to behave a specific way 
So yeah, that's actually kind of weird. It's actually kind of creepy when you think about it, but yeah. Yeah, boy. Really, really bizarre when you think about it. Oh yeah, obey me or your ass is getting shot. So yeah. Sounds like a horror movie right there when you think about it. Oh boy. Anyway, so okay, this may not be the most fast paced Zo film, so it may seem a little slow in comparison of some of the other movies. Sure, that is a thing, but it didn't bother me too much, really. As I said, yes, it's more in focus on the human characters, and yes, there's a character in the film that has uh, created this, like this, this button thing that creates noise. He's supposed because he's supposed to be some sort of inventor. Yeah, he becomes a part of the plot as well, of course. Yeah, there's quite a few things I like to bring up, but I don't want to spoil anything, really. I rarely do that in my reviews. So anyway, at least for this version I'm talking about, I'll give it... One thing I would definitely say is that I do miss the suit acting, suit nation. I guess it's what it's referred to. But anyway, re regardless, whatever, I do miss that, though. Yes, it's very traditional, hands-on filmmaking, but yeah, it's actually missed, really. Very hands-on. That's actually great, actually. So, for what it's worth, considering the time period, yes, the special effects are actually pretty good. One thing I never understood is that in the 2014 Godzilla film, people complained that that they didn't show up enough. Like, what are you talking about? In this film, he barely shows up at all in this movie. Like, at all, he's barely in here. But, okay, that seems odd. But sure, whatever. And then, in this film, Shingazola, people complained about the fact that, oh, it has politics. Uh, are we watching the same movie here when it comes to the original films? Like, the, the, the thing is that female characters play an important role in the vast majority of the Godzilla films, this was no exception. So, yeah, female empowerment much? So yeah, bottom line, the politics was already there. It, it was there. So, again, I'm just wondering, what are you talking about? What? Uh, anyway, I could go on, but whatever. I'll give this version a Novavar rating of... Uh, 7.3 out of 10. I get to 7.3 out of 10. Not too shabby, I guess. Thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh yeah, later.